Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with Classroom of the Elite Season 2 Episode number 13 Reaction and this is the final episode of this season or this part of Season 2. A uh, new part is going to come, I'm guessing <coughs> probably next year. Uh, so yeah, so okay, uh, the previous episode was one of the best was the best i feel like the episode of this whole series because yeah that was amazing so what happened obviously uh Kaizawa was uh being tortured and uh, uh ayano koji went there and uh, yeah showed ruin what's fear and now the whole like you know thing which we saw uh, it's interesting to see how ruin talks about how he has never felt fear and uh, he talks about how what's like you know he might Ayanokoji might win this time but uh Ruben is not going to stop he's going to continue harassing them day after day after day and this is going to keep continuing and he wanted to see uh what emotion Ayanokoji showed while he was hitting him you know like him saying that oh i'm going to not leave you you know you might make beat me up might make me unconscious uh but yeah i'll be back uh after i like you know I'm, i've come back from the hospital i'll be back again and i'll harass you again and uh, this was the most powerful thing that Ruben had, you know, his not giving up attitude and him actually realizing that he won't be able to win this time, but with persistency, he will win. But seeing Ayanakoji show no emotion to that struck him, struck fear in him so much that he realized that he cannot do anything. Like, I kind of thought about it, like, you know, I was thinking, like, why, like, you know, after seeing that he's no displaying no emotions, why did he actually get so affected? I realize it now. Basically, his persistency, which was probably something that he realized like, he realized, like oh, if I keep harassing them, keep doing this, you know, obviously, Ayanokoji will also show uh, fear or something like that. And there must be some kind of emotion that he's going to show. But even after saying that, oh, I'm not going to give up, I'm going to come back, which was like his trump card here, you know, his way of winning this whole thing, his persistency, even after showing that, Ayanokoji showed no emotion to that. He was like, oh, just another day, you know, that type of attitude was something that made him fearful of the whole situation because he saw that he doesn't care. He realized that he might come back again and again and again, but Ayanokoji will, will just do the same thing over and over again. He will never stop. This is just nothing for him, which probably is something that struck fear in him. And yeah, which is why he realized how, how, uh, you know like how how much of a disadvantage he's at and you know that's why i guess and uh, yeah that's how he was defeated and obviously in the end uh we see ayano koji kind of telling karizawa that it's okay you know that i'll be i'll help you out even in the future and that's where it ended all right let's see what happens today this is episode 13 final part uh, final episode of this part and i do wonder what they're going to do with this one and uh, with this episode like yeah, let's see, because Ruin is defeated. I'm, I'm curious as to what ha will happen to Ruin as well. Will he get punished or something? We'll see. Anyways, uh, let's begin. This is episode number um, 13. So yeah, I'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here. Sync it to whichever is your preference. And let's get started. All right, here's the countdown. Three, two, one, go. The worst enemy you can meet will always be yourself. All right. Oh, this is ruin. Oh, it's a snake. Decision. <clears throat> okay. Wait, is this Ruin's place? Oh yeah, okay. <clears throat> oh my god. Yup. Ah. <clears throat> Drop out? What? I doubt that. Don't throw your phone like that. Wait, what? Yeah. 
Time strain is only five minutes. Serve some purpose. <laughs> oh my god, yo. Damn, Iron Koji really affected him a lot. I was not expecting to, this to be this bad. So oh, Iron Koji is keeping an eye. Wow. Whoa, okay. Oh, wow. Typical Iron Koji. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's realizing that now. I guess she never really thought about it. <laughs> because up until now, her whole thing was I like he called she called him herself a parasite. So I guess up until now she was looking at the whole situation in that perspective because you know Ainokoji is the one who is protecting her. So yeah, you know that was her point of view. And obviously, like she said, I have changed after that previous incident. So now her whole point of view has shifted a little bit and that's why she's probably realizing that she likes him yeah <clears throat> oh my god you know i'm, I'm thinking it would have been amazing if <laughs> if Kushida saw that whole fist fight, oh boy, she would realize what she's messing with. You know? <laughs> she would stop her crap, you know, completely. What? Um, this is random. Oh yeah, there's still like a... <laughs> yeah, right. Eat back. Oh boy. Grab lines. Oh. What? What? <laughs> Probably like a like you know cherry blossom tree somewhere. Twenty fifth December. Oh. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. She's doing herself a hole. Uh. Oh my god. Oh no. This is bad. <laughs> wow, this is 
<laughs> this is a mess. Probably, I guess. I doubt that. Oh, Mr. A is calling. All right. Hmm. Okay. Oh, there you go. He, he wants to see if... <laughs> oh, wow. He's not even listening. He just hung up. <laughs> What? Oh my god, this girl. Probably that. Like, otherwise, what else do you think he's asking? Oh. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> the way she answers that. Oh no, what's he going to say? Oh, there you go, this one. There you go, alright, yeah. It'll help us out, you know? Wait, he just says that. He, he just told her, what? Oh, I guess. It, I don't think Manavik told him that don't keep my name secret. Uh. Hmm. So what did he say? There you go. Nah, like I said, I think Manu probably wants her to be better. Like, he genuinely wants her best. Like, like I said, it's just that she isn't able to express it properly. Oh my god. Yeah, piss off. What is... Oh. Like... <laughs> like I said, Kushida needed to see that, you know, that whole scene. Oh, wait, he called Ruben here. <laughs> oh, boy. Part of the blame falls with her. Ah. Oh, that's how. Okay, okay. So he was gonna get expelled, I guess. <laughs> nah. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, true. What? Oh.
Click on that show before sir. Whoa! <laughs> well, I don't know. Is that really why? I doubt that. He doesn't care about what happens to the other class. Yeah. No. Issue. Okay, interesting. Which is uh, Kushida? Oh lord. Wait, Kushida's first name is Kikyo, isn't it? I forgot about it. Oh! <laughs> okay, so basically saying we are going to go up, but then since she's, I'll, I'll see too that she's getting expelled, that's why we're going to come down again. So it's like a necessary sacrifice, I guess. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, is she waiting for... Karizawa. But Karizawa was supposed to come, wasn't it? Yeah, there you go. <coughs> wow. This is awkward. Eh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's what they talked about. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Yo, I look at his face. <laughs> Wait, she made reservations for four? Then, yeah, it was obviously. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> mm. <clears throat> ah, that's why. Interesting. <laughs> University. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh boy. Hmm. Yeah, right. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
Wow, that was the way that was so dry. <laughs> what are the answers like that? Well, that's him. That's just him. No problem. Yeah. Oh, damn. Wait, where's the tree? Where, there's no tree here. Why? Okay. Well, yeah, that's... Mm -hmm. Wow. What? Okay, I was not expecting that. <laughs> wow. Oh. Hmm. Interesting question. Okay. Oh, wait, what? Oh! Wow, okay, that's... Yeah, that means he, he did think about it. Oh, okay. Not Karizawa? Oh my god. Well, obviously, what else was I thinking? Proposing an end to our arrangement. Delaying this. Yeah, oh boy. All according to plan. Well, but, but what? Yeah, I'm still in there. Hmm. Like she said, he said, I'm still in there. So, yeah. <sighs> like, this is the thing. So, I guess you could say that I might, you might say, like, you know, like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people will interpret this whole ending scene in a lot of different ways. The most common way of interpreting this is like, oh, he's 
like you know he's still like that you know he he's thinking about oh will i ever be able to break out of this but the thing here is that okay all right let, let the ending end i'll talk about it after that just a sec i, I need to think and talk about it then <clears throat> Okay. Wait, there's still something there. Right. Okay, who's that? Oh, is that is that that girl I see? No, wait, who oh yeah, it is her. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. Oh boy, she knows. The masterpiece of the white room that you're. Paul's genius. Oh wow. Next third season. Alright. Okay, this episode. So yeah, like I was saying, um, like the final scene of the whole scene where uh, Anokuji says that, oh, I'm still there. Uh, will I ever be able to come out that scene? So that's I'm pretty sure like, you know, like obviously at first she was kind of, he was kind of showing his empathy towards Karizawa saying like, oh, she's not suitable for being a replacement. And uh, you know, then kind of saying like uh, giving her the medicine and then you know like walking with her and in the end thinking that yeah this will do for now you know she's completely dependent on me and like you know trusts me won't betray me ever so you know like he'll be she'll be an excellent pawn and then this then after that she thinks of this that oh i'm still in there would i ever be able to come out of there so like i said like a lot of people might interpret in a lot of way one common interpretation i can see people's talking about uh, this will talk about the scene is like oh he's still you know like he's still he doesn't he hasn't changed you know he's still like that and uh, maybe in the future there is a chance of him changing i would say no he actually changed why i'm saying this is like you know a thing like you know that thing which is like you know a, a, a mad person won't say that i'm like i won't i wonder if i'm mad or not like you know like that type of a thing a person who's crazy or a person who's mad you know they won't won't ever think that oh i'm actually mad they won't think ever ever think of that you know a bad person a person who does bad things would never think that i'm doing a bad thing similar to that if anagoji was really that person still the person without any empathy and that he would never think that oh will i like you know ever be able to come out of there him actually thinking of this that will i ever be able to come out of that place kind of shows that he's in the process of changing or he's just starting to change this is the thing like you know this uh, what do you call that this um realization or this uh what's that there's a particular term for this self um Ah, I cannot find that word. I, I'm pretty sure you can understand what I'm trying to say. Him realizing that, oh, I'm still in that place and I, you know, will I ever be able to get out? That in itself shows that he's either in the process of changing or he has started to change. So yeah, this is the thing. Like, you know, like, like, yeah, it's not that he's still in that place. Since he's thinking about this, that means he's starting to change or he will change in the future. And that's just it. Because I'm pretty sure if this happened before, or if he was still like you know like uh, if, if this situation happened before when he had no empathy at all he probably wouldn't even think of this you know 
So him thinking of this in itself shows that he's probably in the process of changing and he will. Like this is the thing, like in season one, you remember the final uh, episode where Ayano Koji said that, oh, like, you know, it was Horika Kita then. He said something like, oh, Hori Kita, like, you know, you, you see, you think that I'm like, you know, I'm a good person. I'm going to help you out. You're wrong. If you are, come in my way, I'm going to remove you as well. That type of thing he said, as far as I can remember, while this season, the ending, he says the same thing kind of he talks about being like you know pawns and everything but the, in the end he, he adds this like you know this whole net like you know talk about still being in the white white room and uh, you know will i ever be able to come out which in itself shows that from season one and season two there's there's a little bit of change that happened here in season one he never talked about that obviously because we never knew about i understand we didn't know about the white room at that moment properly but still he didn't even have any kind of he just said that oh i'm going to remove you if you come in my way but here he's he is at least thinking that oh will i ever be able to come out of that will there a time will a time ever come when i actually look at people as people instead of bonds that in itself is more than enough for now i think this is barely the season two and as far as I know, the, the light novel has a lot of materials. So I don't know what happens after this and how Ayano Koji is currently in the night novel. No need to spoil me. Like I said, we need to, we will have to wait for the upcoming, there's another season going to come. So no need to spoil me about anything, but I, I really hope he, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm like 50%, like, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that at least where the light novel is currently, hopefully he has changed, you know? not a drastic change but maybe a little you know maybe he at least thinks of some people as genuine allies without thinking that they are pawns hopefully and uh, yeah and even if that's not the case hopefully he's in the process of changing like that's what i got from this final scene and uh, you know like that whole scene where he talked about it so, yeah all right, so this episode, uh, a, a good end, you know, like that was a good way they kind of wrapped it up. Uh, and uh, yeah, okay, so in the first part, <clears throat> we get to see, I'm guessing that was Ruben's, um, you know, Ruben's uh, past. Like he was talking about like, um, I think that was a snake. He says like if that day, before I killed him, He'd bitten me if I'd felt afraid, afraid, would I have made the same decision? Probably not, because he never was able to experience uh, fear. That's why, you know, uh, this is what happened in the end. But at the same time, like he says, if he was able to feel fear before, he killed that. I'm guessing he's talking about that snake. Or maybe the snake was a metaphor i don't know maybe it was a metaphor who knows um <clears throat> you know like he's talking about that situation and if if he actually got bitten before he was he killed it he would never be the person he is now which is also something we need to think about you know like he he wouldn't be in this position who knows he maybe he wouldn't even have enrolled in this school or maybe his, his life would have taken him in some other direction because he never felt fear he's the person that he is now and uh, you know he got beaten up by anokoji and realized the actual meaning of fear and now he's changing a little by little so yeah you know what by the end of it i feel like whatever happened happened for the good <laughs> you know like like i said if if he actually like he said if he felt fear before then would he have made the same decision he probably wouldn't have and he probably wouldn't have ended up in this school so like that's why i'm saying whatever happened happened for the good and uh, at least now he's thinking <laughs> about uh, like you know like he, he's not that overconfident and cocky he's thinking about you know what what's like you know about fear and everything he got to experience that fear and he's he's changed something like that all right now next we kind of see ibuki uh, going to uh, ruins place i'm guessing that's his place uh, you know and is is like where is he like i'm trying to find out and i'm guessing a few days have have passed after that because ruben's uh injuries have reduced a lot you know like okay, he was beaten up bad his eyes were swelling and everything and it's like 
you know, it, it was bad. He was bleeding and everything. So looking at his face now, it seems a few days have passed from that point onwards. And he has healed for the most part. Obviously, there's still a few bandages and everything. But yeah. It's so funny to see him just walking around without any, like, you know, like any kind of a goal. Like, this is the thing. Like, you know, like he, he was just having too much fun, I feel like, up until now. So at least now he has actually stopped and he's, he's kind of looking at his life and he's looking at the whole situation and thinking, you know, like about all the things that he did and everything. And uh, yeah, so basically that. Now, he's like walking away and Ibuki comes in and uh, Ruin throws him, uh, throws her the, uh, his phone um, and says like, oh, you take my points. Now, okay, Ibuki asks him, like, but aren't you the type of person who never gives up? Isn't that how you got Albert as well? Which is interesting, a small little, I guess, um, a little information we got. That's how he was able to make Albert, uh, you know, follow him, you know, because he would probably got defeated and beaten up by Albert multiple times, but he never gave up and his persistency and everything probably made Al Albert, you know, like decide to join him or something like that. Um, so Ibuku is like, yeah, like, you know, why are you, are you running away or something? And he says a tyrant's reign is only permitted as long as his authority serves some purpose. Um, okay, interesting. I guess the reason why he said this is because he was going to be expelled or something. Is that why? Because at that moment when he said that, I didn't realize what he meant by that. But now it makes sense because later on, Anakuji says something like, Oh, he says something like, oh, like, you know, I was not expelled because you said something to the teachers. So I'm guessing he was already going to get expelled. And that's why, you know, he said like, oh, only a tyrant's, like, you know, tyranny is uh, up until it's allowed or permitted. The, the, the thing that he just said. And if he says like, oh, fight me and just kicks him, he just falls down flat on his face. And... Uh, yeah, and he, he throws the phone towards him and just goes. And I love how Anubhai is just waiting there. He's probably in, doing his morning run or something. I don't know. Something like that. <laughs> Saw this situation and just hid behind a tree. <laughs> oh, boy. And he's like, ah, oh, this one will be useful. And I'm like, yep, typical Anubhai, obviously. That's what he's thinking. <laughs> Now, after that, we get to see K uh, like, you know, waking up and thinking about the whole scene, saying, thinking like, oh, like he, he's like, you know, he's helped, he helped me out yesterday. He did a lot of bad things, but still, you know, he's uh, like, you know, he's helping me out. He's, he'll, he'll do that in the future as well. And then she's thinking, like, oh, do I like him or something? Which is kind of interesting because, you know, like, I never realized this, but I thought that he prob she probably had inklings to that she liked him probably realized her feelings i thought up until now but it's interesting to see that she never realized it and is realizing it now which again shows us a lot about her mental state up until now and how it has changed her not betraying ayano koji in itself was something that developed her character immensely and now he she can actually think of something other than clinging to someone or being a parasite her thought pattern has completely changed and changing her thought pattern made her realize about her feelings. She thought up until now, she never thought that was her feelings of love or attachment. She, she probably thought that, oh, since Ayanokoji is helping me out, that's why maybe I'm feeling like this, you know, like that's why I want to cling to him so that he doesn't like, you know, just abandon me and go to someone else, you know, purely because of that, you know, I'm always thinking about him. That's, that's definitely the thought process she had up until now, while standing her ground, actually getting out of her, like, you know, that, that what do you call it, that parasite, uh, like, you know, that, that thing that he, she talked about, you know, that stage, he was, she was able to become an actual person with actual uh, own thought, own free will, and having gained that, she now realizes her feelings. So, which is, yeah, that's how I'm interpreting this scene, you know, the reason why she never realized her feelings up until now. I don't know, I might be wrong, but either way. <clears throat> okay, so next we get to see Sato, Sato asking, um, 
Kadu Sawa that oh like you know like oh I'm going to ask him on a date and uh, he she just brings out like a list of what they're going to do. I love the fact that in the end she says like oh there'll be a legendary tree. I I think this is like a <laughs> you know I've seen in a lot of anime uh, visual novels as well that you know like a legendary tree. There's a rumor of a legendary tree in our school where if you at this amount of time um stand underneath the tree and confess your love to someone and the other person accepts it you will be uh you know like you'll be uh, like what do you call it you'll become you'll become a couple and it'll never like you know break or something like that you know that type of a legend it has always been like and these type of legends and all it actually goes out and around and i'm guessing she was talking about that usually the tree you know the legendary tree is usually like a sakura tree and uh, yeah that's how it usually goes i remember playing a visual novel it's, it also has an anime if you know i'm pretty sure if uh, you've probably seen a few of you, you probably have seen the anime it's called da capo you know it has like a da capo one two three like it also has visual novels i played one and two i think i've played i've I played three as well as far as i can remember yeah uh the main theme of that sh show or that visual novel is the legendary sakura tree or something like that so as far as i can remember so i, I feel like that's like that's that was like something like that that's why she said ah legendary tree <laughs> so yeah anyways um okay so karuzawa is like oh it's okay you know like I'm, I'm going to i'm going to hook you up with some good plan and everything like you know no problem i'm going to help you out but obviously in his in her head he she's like oh my god why and she's like, like her whole plan is crazy. She's, <laughs> she's made the date plan in December 25th and everything. And, uh, you know, like, then she suddenly says like, oh, like, you know, I'm, I'm actually really jealous about you and uh, Hirata. So, you know what? Why don't you two come as well? Let, let's make this a double date. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, this is not going as I want it to. <laughs> because obviously that would be extremely awkward because... You know, like, Karizawa knows the whole situation, Anakuji knows the whole situation. And, you know, like, like it's, it's, it's a really messy situation. And I feel like the only one who will be in the dark in this situation is Sato. Because Hirata also kind of knows, partially, what's going on in the whole scene, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> like, poor girl, she's the only one who was in the dark, never knew about what the hell is going on. And obviously, Ainakuji accepted the date because he wanted to figure out who, what this girl is and probably wanted to just directly say that, no, you know, like, I'm, I'm not ready for it, like he said. And then after that as well, uh, and after that, he also wanted to figure out probably that if she can be used as a pawn, you know. Now, Karizawa is like, you know, at her home, she's thinking about, you know, all that stuff. And Mr. A calls him, which... <laughs> I know Koji. I love how even the name is A, so that no one can like you know see what like you know if suddenly if, if the phone call comes in and someone looks at your screen, they'll realize it's called I know Koji. And they'll be like, "What? I know Koji is calling you?" Obviously, that'll give everything away. So that's why it's written A. <laughs> wow, that's crazy. Oh boy. Now. Okay, so Anako is like, oh, I wanted to look into something. Obviously, K is, K is like, what the hell? Like, you said that you're not going to ask me anything. Then she's like, all right, what do you want to know? And uh, yeah, I think, what, what did she say? He talks about, like, you know, the date plan, I think. Just a sec. Oh, uh, about Sato. Um, I want to know who she hangs out with, what she does in a normal day. If possible, I'd like to know her personality, hobbies, personal preference. Okay, all that stuff. She's telling him, he's telling her. And, uh, you know, he's like, yeah, that's what you should figure out. And it's so funny that <laughs> Kairiza was like, oh, is he, is he asking me all of this because he wants to actually date her or something? I'm like, <laughs> you think Anako is going to do that? Even if he intends to date someone, do you think he's going to call you? <laughs> and ask you to <laughs> research on that person and tell him that'll be extremely weird i feel like you know like no i don't think anyone does i don't know at least not i know koji like you know even if he decided to like you know go out with someone 
No, he's not going to say tell you to do that. <laughs> I'm like, what? But obviously, like, you know, she is now she realizes her own feelings. So she's probably paranoid now. And also in the end, she also does say that, oh, or maybe he just wants to make her his pawn or something like that. So, yeah, that was he, she also thought about that. But, you know, like the other part of her heart says that, oh, maybe not. You know, her, the, the part of the heart that is kind of concerned and paranoid about the situation of thinking like, oh, maybe Ayanokoji actually likes her or something. That part of the heart is fearing for that. So, yeah, so she's like, she's like, all right, fine. Like, you know, like she was going to say something and Ayanokoji just <laughs> hangs up. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. Now, the next scene is where we see Horikita and uh, Ayanokoji. Ayanokoji has called Horikita and, uh, you know, like, he's like, oh, I want to ask you a favor. And he gives him, her the phone. No, uh, at first he says that, oh, I want to become the student council president. And I was thinking he's not going to mention Manabu's name. But then he's like, oh, Manabu wants you to become the president. Obviously, Horikita is extremely surprised. Horikita is like, what? My brother told you to make, convince me to, for, to get into the student council? She's like, why? Like, my brother never thinks so highly of me. I won't be, like, you know, worthy enough or stuff like that, she's thinking. And that's why she's like, oh, I doubt that that's possible. I, I think you're lying. And Ayanokoji gives her the phone number and he's like, oh, call him, ask him. And she's like, all right, calls him, talks to him about something. I don't know what the hell he talked about. You know, Horikita was just saying yes, yes. And, you know, like all that stuff. And in the end, he's, she, after, like, you know, Ending the phone call, she says that, um, okay, he said joining would be to my benefit, and, uh, but I can't see what good joining the student council would do to me. At the very least, I won't do it while serving as your go-between. <laughs> So I guess Anubis is like, yeah, I'll back off for now. So yeah, negotiation unsuccessful, I guess, for now. So basically, Hoikita is saying like, unless and until I myself am able to do stuff on my own, I won't become the student council. Because obviously it's true, Hoikita herself knows that he, she's actually working on behalf of Anubis. Anubis is like the mastermind behind everything, you know. So as long as she's in his shadow, she doesn't want to become the student council president. So something like that, I guess that's what she planned. Oh, I know she's like, all right, fine, I'm going to back off. Now this thing, like I said, I again, I told this, I, I you know, I, I came to this conclusion multiple episodes ago, and I talked about this as well. Um, I'm, I, I just think Marabu basically is a person who just wants the best for Horikita, but but isn't able to express it properly. Just like a few other brothers we have seen in a few other animes. Like, you know, Bleach, um, Black Clover, you know, they, they, they act so badly with their, like, you know, just mistreats their siblings. And then in the end, we get to, get to see that they're actually concerned about them, which is like a weird thing, obviously, like, you know, the whole, like, I can, uh, yeah, like that, like the whole thing in Bleach and Black Clover never really sat, sat, sat well with me at all, like, especially in Bleach. Because I guess I can see a Black Clover, like, you know, Nozel and Noel situation. I can kind of understand why he did that. But the whole Bleach situation where, you know, spoiler here, obviously everyone knows about this, I'm pretty sure. Where Byakuya decided to just, um, you know, like, just sacrifice Rukia for, you know, like, whatever. Well, all those reasons. I'm not going to go details into it. Just because, you know, like, of her wife's, you know, all that stuff. So that, and later on we, we realizing that he actually is concerned about Rukia, like, you know, like, at the same degree, was actually didn't sit well with me. I'm like, yeah, he, she was going to die. Like, what, what would you do after that? But either way, I feel like it's, obviously it's not in that extent, but I feel like this situation here is also something like that. I might be completely wrong though. Who knows, maybe Amanabu has some other plan. But this is the vibe that I'm getting up until now. Manabu just probably just wants the best for Horikita and he's just not able to properly tell that to her or something like that is going on. 
that's why you know when Horikita talked to Manabu about in the previous one of the previous episodes that 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 episode the sports festival episode I forgot the name of the uh, whole thing um, Manabu just stopped and Horikita told her him that oh like you know I'm I'm doing my best this time it was like you know um, like you know, uh, I wasn't able to properly do it but I'll try to do my best from here onwards something like that he told she told and Hori, uh, Manabu stopped listened to her and just went on her his way that and obviously this she wants her to go into the student council all of this are basically for her own benefit and he, he just he just wants the best for her he's not able to express it all that stuff but just a guess like i said i don't know maybe manabu has some other plan maybe he has some other reasons why he wants horikita to go into the student council either way and suddenly kushida comes in like uh, just a sudden appearance she's like ah merry christmas and then just Shows her like you know that disgusted face. <laughs> All right. Okay. Next scene. Anakoji has called in Ruin, and uh, here. Okay, I need to read this part. Um, Ruin says the sabotage of the security cameras in the second gym building. Um, part of the blame falls with us. Apparently, Class D put in that claim that means i get to stay all right i'm kind of interested in how anakoji made this possible like he says the class deep said that you know which probably means horikita was the one like i'm guessing anakoji told horikita to do that and horikita did that i do wonder what horikita told everyone else to convince them to actually say this you know like because obviously you need to convince the other class members as well that oh we're going to give out this statement so you know like, we all should accept it even if Horikita herself decided to say it and if no one actually agreed with it, they won't be able to give that statement. And obviously Ruben is involved in this, so I'm pretty sure a lot of people are pissed off at Ruben, so I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people would actually decide not to give out this statement. Because, you know, Ruben's getting expelled, so everyone will be like, ah, good riddance. But I'm, I'm really extremely curious as to how was Horikita, how did Horikita made it possible? Because I'm pretty sure Ayanokoji told Horikita to say this and Horikita actually brought this up with the class and everyone decided to actually give this statement, this statement of we are also collectively responsible for the gym security camera. You know, that, that statement. How were, was Horikita able to convince them? I'm genuinely curious about it. But either way, they somehow was, were able to do it and brought that up to the teachers. And obviously that's why the whole, like, you know, like, Ruben is not getting expelled, because they also shared responsibility with her. And there you go, and I know, uh, Ruben's like, are you the one who arranged that? And she's like, oh, you are going to drop out because of the cameras? <laughs> Question mark. And uh, I figured it was a Karizawa's thing. And uh, here Ruben says, if I'd done that, Ishizaki and the others would be expelled as well which is true because everyone else was involved in this and that would be a lousy way for a leader to take responsibility yeah because we didn't want anyone else to get mixed up in this whole nonsense that he pulled off so okay <clears throat> and he says and regarding the gym i have an addendum okay addendum it was a wise decision ruin had you been alone you could have still hung in there and fought me. Putting on that show before surrendering had value in itself. Wait a minute, what does addendum mean? I, I really don't know. An item or additional material added at the end of a book or other publication. Ah. Oh, okay, wait. All right, let me read this again. This part I generally don't, I, I wasn't able to understand while I'm reacting to it. So it's, it's a wise decision, Ruben. Um, had you been alone, you could have still hung in there and fought me. Putting on that show before surrendering had value in itself. I thought looking down on others was my... Wait, is Anakoji actually... Oh my god. Uh, Anakoji says here that, oh, if you were alone, you probably could have been able to, you know, like, hang, hang on to this whole thing. Uh, like, you know, like, he says something like... 
you sh gave me a show no what Just a sec oh putting on the show before surrendering had value so he's saying that you put on a show before you surrendered so is he saying telling ruin that that oh you, you could have you know you could have probably won this if you were alone so you, you that show that you put before surrendering in itself has a value so is he trying to like you know like like obviously both of them knows what happened there ruin definitely knows that either even if the, he, he was alone he would have surrendered by the end so ainako is saying that oh if you were alone it, it would have been probably different you would have probably been able to keep yourself you know like uh, like you know uh, you wouldn't have surrendered uh, since there are other people and you know like you put on that show and surrendered you know good job that that has value in itself so is he trying to like you know like just making up like a false scenario and telling that to ruin to just you know to keep his ego afloat like that type of a thing is, is that what he's trying to do here because both i'm like you know yeah definitely both of them knows what happened there i'm pretty sure ruin also realizes that even if he was alone and even if like you know there was like an army with him not army never mind that you know like even if there was a lot of other people with him um he would he still would have lost so even though both of them knows that anakoji telling this to him is like his way of saying that oh you might have won and that's why ruin says like oh this looking down on everyone because you know like this is anakoji's way of like you know saying that oh you know what you fought well you might have won if the circumstances were different while both of them knows that in no way he would have won so saying that the winner saying that to someone else you know like and Ryan says like oh are you looking down on me is that what you do to everyone okay let me read that part where he says like i thought looking down on others was my job but i'm retired now yeah, I think that's what happened. So basically, in 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 uh, correct me if I'm wrong, because this is how I am interpreting this whole scene. Um, let's take a simpler example. Uh, let let there be two like you know like two person who are like you know on a track field. You know they're racing, and uh, one person is extremely talented. He would have won in any like you know like in either way. While there's another person who you know uh, who lost both the person knows their difference in power their difference in talents and still the person who won who's he comes to him and says that oh you fell down in the middle of the road um if that didn't happen you probably would have been able to give me give me a better kind of fight you, maybe you would have won as well you know good job both of them knows that's impossible you know like their talent was so like you know there's a, such a big difference between the talent that in no way that would have been possible still the person who won is saying that to that person it, it's a similar thing happening here you know if i'm able to explain properly because that's how i'm seeing this thing because anagoji telling that oh since you were alone you know like uh, and you gave me that show before surrendering you know no ruben never would have been able to do anything to anagoji even if he was alone or something else so he's just giving him like a thing like oh you did well you know you maybe you would have been able to do it which is why ruin says that oh looking down on others i thought that was my thing i'm retired now i don't know like this is how i interpret this 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 small little scene tell me if i'm wrong i think that's what basically happened here so basically anako is saying that oh yeah you might have won if circumstances were different so yeah something like that he's, he's just he's just you know just what do you call it just consoling him yeah that's the word consoling him that's the proper word that i want to wanted to use i was not i wasn't able to find that particular word out consoling him he's just consoling him is that what he's doing here let me know <laughs> because i think that's what happened here this is the way they kind of word this here is a little bit difficult to interpret and understand i feel like Anyways, um, so Ruben says like, oh, so how do you plan to use me now? And uh, he's like, ah, what are you saying? What plan? Now, Ruben has a little bit of misunderstanding. I feel like he says like, oh, you want me to use, uh, to use me against other classes, don't you? 
know like to like, you know drop them down and like you know for you your class to become the top or something and but i know is like no i have no intent like that which obviously every one of us knows he has so no, not no such intent and he says like if my class wants to become class a they can do it i'm not going to say anything but my me myself i have no plans on actually actively doing it mm, so here uh Anuku says but there is a problem that class d has which i need to take care of and which i will take care of obviously that problem being kushida and ruin also realizes that ruin says like what do you want to do <laughs> to compare her to a cancer makes sense obviously that's what she is you know like if you keep it at bay for a time it, it affects the other cells and you know like that's what happens that's that's basically cancer and she sees basically that so you should take it out as soon as possible so he says what do you want to do and here an koji makes a prediction in third term class d will ascend to class c but it will likely fall back to class d because i'm going to have kushida kikyo spelled okay one thing i'm extremely curious about this is one thing i don't think they've ever, ever told her or maybe they told us i don't remember how what's going to happen when they graduate from class one to class to the next class will the classes class a b c e be the same or will the individual people according to uh, individual students in them according to the credits and whatnot will they actually change classes like for example a lot of people like for example like let's let there be 50 people from 50 students from class d and 50 uh, students from class C, maybe uh, 20 students from class D actually get shifted to class C, while, you know, like um, maybe 10 students from class C remain in class C, while the rest of the um, 10, uh, no, the, the 10 more students from class A comes to class C and 10 students from class b comes to class c while in class a class b and class d similar thing happens are the students going to get mixed up based on their merit their uh, credits is that what's going to happen and will there be like a new class that is formed with new students you know like that will be class c but the students will be different there will be a few people from class d few people from class b few people from class a Similarly to that, class A will also have the same thing, where there will be a few people from class A, few from B, few from... Like, is that how it's going to happen? Or are they going to move up the class according to their group? Like, class C will be class C. Class D will be class D. That's how they're going to move up. And, you know, like, and if they, if they are able to win, and, like, you know, uh, if they are able to, you know, go from class D, if it is able to become class C, then class C will go to class D's position. Like, is that how it's going to, is it like a collective thing or are they going to get scattered when they change classes? This is one thing that I'm, I'm curious about, which I'm pretty sure we'll get to see when they graduate from this class to the next class, we'll, we'll probably get our answer there. But yeah, this is one thing that I've been curious about. Anyway, so basically what Anakoji is saying here is like, we are going to be, to, and this is a prediction I'm making, we're going to go to class C, but then we're again going to come to class D back again because Kushida is going to Kushida is going to get expelled. I'm guessing this probably will like incur a penalty where you know from class C they'll have to probably come back to class D. You know because yeah, what a member from your class is getting expelled. So is that why? The maybe maybe the the way Anakoji is going to do it is going to result in them coming back from class C to class D again. Like you know their rank will be dropped again. Who knows? But he just made a prediction here. <laughs> Ruin is like, oh, you're terrible to your core, aren't you? Right. Now, after that, uh, the day today is here. Sato is here. Everyone's here. Sato's just, oh, have you been waiting? And Anuk is like, nah, I just got here. <laughs> and uh, Hirata and Kushida is here. I love how, you know, the, the, like, you know, Kushida was holding, like, you know, Hirata's, what do you call it, the, the, the hand. And when they come and stand in front of Anokoji, and Anokoji is looking at her, <laughs> he leaves. <laughs> he leaves her hand. <laughs> oh. Anyways. Now, okay, so it's so funny. Like, they, they act as if they had no plan on meeting. And they had no plan. Like, they, they talked about it before. Like, they're going to make this a double date. And everything was ready. 
you know. So you know, the, the, uh, Sato and uh, uh, what's her name? I, I, uh, Karizawa. Yeah, Karizawa suddenly said, "Oh, why not make this like a double thing, date thing?" <laughs> Hirata doesn't know what the hell is going on. He's like, "Oh no, we shouldn't disturb them." And uh, Sato's like, "No, it's okay," you know. Obviously, because they already made a plan. And uh, Anuk is like, yeah, if you want to, then yeah, I won't object. And then there's a little montage of them doing stuff, you know, like, like, <laughs> oh boy, like they bring popcorn, like, you know, they're like watching the movie. Anukoji with her, his same just stoic face, just looking at it. Uh, and then Kaisa was just peeking behind what the hell is going on. <laughs> okay. So after that montage, they go to the diner place and they're like, oh, we have reservation for like, you know, four of you. And Anukoji is like, four? Like, didn't you, like, you know, what? <laughs> and Karisa was like, <laughs> he says impressive insight. <laughs> uh, Karisa was like, I had her alter the reservation for us before we got here. Yeah, right. Like, we would believe that. Oh boy. And yeah. Okay, so here they're kind of sitting down and talking and uh, Anakoji asks Sato like what do you do in your free time and she says like oh I just like you know make stuff, fashion and stuff like that and uh, you know like and then the Hoko question asks like what they're going to do after they graduate and everything and uh, Anakoji is like oh I'm going to go to university. And uh, and Kaizawa kind of sounds like you know like looks sad a little bit probably because you know like he, he, he she realizes what's going on she realizes that you know because he, she knows that Anubi just looks at her as a tool but she herself likes him and you know like the fact that you know like maybe she will the the thought process that oh maybe i'll never be able to express my feelings to him that probably made us sad anyways um they kind of talk about a few stuff over there and yeah the date is over they say goodbye to each other and uh, yeah now obviously now hirata and uh karizawa obviously they 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 know what's going on you know like they both of them they're not dating they know that and you know the karizawa just as a as an act does this so I'm pretty sure, like, you know, they, they were on their way and Kaiser probably told Hirata that, okay, you, like, you know, like, they cannot see us now, you know, like, I'm, I'm splitting up, I'm going somewhere else, you know, and they said goodbye to each other and Kaiser just made an U-turn, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> started following them and then, like, just behind a bush, just sat down, keeping an eye on them. <laughs> oh. I was not expecting her actually to be sitting behind that bush, really, like, you know, I was not expecting that. Okay, so now they were kind of walking and here suddenly Sato says something like, Ayanokoji, you did you not have fun today? Now this part I'll read it again because there's a few interesting things that he says here. He says that like, oh, I, I cannot laugh. I usually don't laugh. And he says like, it's not that I can't smile, but I've judged you unworthy of smiling for. I'm really curious, like, you know, yeah, we've never seen Anakoji laugh, so he says that you're not worthy enough to, like, you know, for me to laugh, and you're gonna show my inner feelings, so maybe, in the, may, like, you know, since he says that, which means maybe in the future, if he actually is able to change his whole perspective on seeing other people as pawn, and generally finds a person, a friend, good friend, or someone else, maybe he will actually laugh, and I'm, like, or smile, I'm curious about that, if that'll happen in the future, probably. Because these, all these little things that we saw in this episode, these were, I'm pretty sure these are like all plot points or triggers that they kind of planted in this episode, which will later on in the future, a day will come, I don't know, maybe in season four, season five, something, if this continues, a day will come when something like that will happen and we'll think of this episode today and think like, oh, he said that this, today's episode, and now we are actually seeing it. A lot of things, she, he, the, a lot of like, you know, points that he made in this episode, I'm pretty sure we'll get to actually see that in future seasons. I don't know, it's it just, that's how I feel like they kind of made this episode. 
you know, like that type of way of storytelling. Like a lot of animes do that, where they like, you know they do, say something, do something, and a lot of episodes later, we suddenly realize like, oh, these two are connected, and he said something like this. Now look at him, something like that. And Sato just says, oh, like you know, will you go out with me? Like, unfortunately, there's no trees here, so that that's out of the you know. Okay. And he says, I'm sorry, Sato, I can't, I can't be what you want me to be. Um, I feel like the subtitles are a little bit different here. He says, I think what he actually says is like, I cannot answer, no. Just a sec, let me, let me listen to that again. Okay. Um. I'm sorry, Sato. Whatever. I cannot give a proper answer to your proposal. Something like that, I guess, if you actually translate it word by word, I think. Which, I guess it kind of means what he says, but something like that. All right. Okay. Um... It starts snowing and she asks like can you tell me why not now this part again is quite interesting what he says I can't be a boyfriend if I don't feel affection to you okay um, obviously she realizes like yeah he, he doesn't like him her and he says like I've never failed romantic feelings for anyone okay um, I don't think I'm, this is an interesting thing he says. I don't think I'm mature enough to fall in love. Which is so interesting. Like he says, I'm not mature enough for love, which shows that his, you know, his personality and everything has been repressed probably because of the white room. And he himself realizes that, you know, like, like different people go through a different, like, you know, a lot of, like, you know, we see stuff and we, learn from the we, we gain our feelings our emotions and everything a lot of environmental and like an you know, external things kind of you know like make us who we are as we grow up and that's how we have our own personality gain our own emotions the way we see the world changes according to how we are like you know, how we grow up and what we see outside you know in our surroundings so obviously ayana koji unable to experience that you know he he has not properly developed He's just that one person who, like, you know, all he can think is like, you know, making people look looks like people as pawns, always fighting and all, like, you know, like probably in a very, like, you know, dangerous environment he was brought up in. That white house, uh, white room. I don't know what the hell that is, but it's probably a lot of things happened. They were probably made to fight amongst each other and saying because we saw a lot of students, you know, over there, a lot of people, uh, little children over there. So Ainokoji was also one of them. Maybe they fought against each other or something like this is like an experiment that they did, I guess. And uh, like, you know, he's, he was the top out of all of them, as in the end, Aritsu says. So there you go. That's why, you know, like the way he was brought up was like that. So all he, like I said, people grow up looking at the surroundings. That was Ayanokoji's surrounding. Kill or be killed, you know, like just just make use of people make it use them use as pawn i'm pretty sure he probably like you know like made use of a lot of students like you know children over there and just whenever they lost like you know lost everything like and he just threw them away and just used them for his own benefit to survive or something like that happened so that's how he was like you know he, he was brought up and that's how he knows that's how he sees the world and suddenly he decided to run away and decided to come to this school so this school is the first time he's seeing the outside world coming into contact with normal people with different people that is why he says that i'm not mature enough for love because yeah he is really not mature enough for gaining those feelings so this is a very interesting thing so basically he himself realizes that and he himself knows how abnormal his situation was and he knows that he he, he has still doesn't have any those type of feelings he's not gained obviously this kind of shows that maybe in the future he'll gain them because he's interacting with people outside you know this is one of the biggest i feel like 
um, indications that in the future Anakoji, there a day will come when Anakoji will actually see other people as people, not as pawns, because his childhood was like this. So obviously he is like this. That is the reason why. You know, now that he's coming in contact with the surroundings, like I said, people grow and people change according to, his, to their surroundings. And now since he's coming, like you know, in contact with a normal surrounding, with normal people and everything. Even though this class in itself, as uh, schools in itself, is not as normal, you know, still, still there are a lot more normal than what Ayanokoji went through. I'm pretty sure. So maybe interacting with so many people and everything, not maybe. I'm pretty sure he is going to change little by little by coming in contact with them. Like this is, you know, he's going to learn more from his surroundings from this point onwards. And in the future, a day will come when maybe he will look at other people as people. Now Sato goes, you know, then runs back. And I love how I know Fuji's like, oh, come out. You know, I can see you there. <laughs> Kaiza was there. And Kaiza was like, oh, why did you like you know reject her? And he says like she's unsuitable substitute for you. <laughs> and uh, and he's she says like at first she blushes and she realizes what he actually meant. <laughs> she, she asks like do you see everyone as a tool or what? <laughs> you know? And he's like, and what if I do? You've never really felt genuine affection for anyone, have you? Um, not so far. Yeah, not so far, which means, like I said, in the future, maybe. Okay, so after that, uh, Kaiso stands up and she's like, oh, like I brought you a present. There you go. You know, like, and Ayanoko is like, okay, so. I also brought you something. Gives her the cold medicine and says like you were soaked at that night, so I brought the medicine for you, so that you know you you don't, um, you know you don't. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, you don't get like a kind of cold or something like you know you don't get sick. That like you know that thing. So <laughs> it's so funny here. I was like, oh my god, and because he's actually you know. Um, paying attention to that, this is like a such a nice thing. And then later on, what he says, I'm like, oh my god, okay, <laughs> all according to plan, you know, <laughs> something like. That. But you know, like, what can I say? He's trying, at least, you know, like he's trying. He himself he said that, yeah, like you know, oh, maybe there's a a day will come when I'll be able to come out of that white room because i'm still in that white room so at least like you know he he was considerate enough to buy like a like medicine for her you know like that in itself i feel like that's quite good <laughs> you know like yeah even though he says like oh it was all according to my plan and everything at least you know like like her, what what like you know what he bought was like something that's going to help her out like you know if she falls sick or something and i guess that's kind of what can i say nice you know like because he she at least uh, like I, I don't know like i feel like this at least shows that she was genuinely concerned for her well-being like you know her, her falling sick because if she if he really wanted to just you know like just make her fall into her his like you know uh like you know sweet words or whatever like you know wanted to make use of her and you know he could have brought something else why did he buy, buy medicine you know buying medicine kind of shows she he thought that oh he she was like you know she 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 was soaked in water maybe she'll fall sick so let me buy medicine she thought of that he thought of that that would mean you know which in itself is i guess pretty like you know nice because anakoji i like you know like you know like i think anakoji that in itself is something to be applauded because this is not the same anakoji as before he is changing i don't know if you're able to understand what i'm trying to say like i'm trying to say is like he could have brought anything else, you know, he could have brought some, I don't know, like teddy bear or something, something else, maybe some food or something, like something else, which, which like, works as a gift, you know, maybe a pen or something, like, you know, like some muffler, whatever, you know, she could have brought, he could have brought that and gave, given it to Karyuzawa and the same thing would have happened, you know, like he could have used that gift as a way to make her think like, oh, like, you know, he cares about me and stuff like that. Why did he buy medicine? That's what I'm saying. That means he at least gave in a little effort and at least thought about her, you know, and thought that 
oh he, she's going to get sick so let me buy medicine that little thing that little thought like you know, even though he did it for some other reason that in itself is applaudable that's what i'm trying to say if i'm able to properly express myself so i don't know i'm, I'm trying to find something like you know like positive in this whole thing because i myself think ayanakoji is going to change that's why i'm trying to look at this in an extreme positive manner you know extreme positive manner and i'm trying to find out little things that might show that ayanakoji is actually changing or is in the process of changing so there you go <laughs> you know trying to find the silver lining and think that's what it's that's the word you know finding the silver lining yeah that's i'm guess, i'm guessing i'm that's what i'm trying to do anyways um okay so after that they're like you know walking and here anakoji talks about the whole thing okay let me read this part they're walking and uh, okay anakoji says not says but in his head he says this will do <laughs> kaizawa k is now entirely dependent on me okay so all according to plan proposing an end to our agreement to spark lingering regrets in her <clears throat> delaying rescue until she moments before she broke okay from the previous episode's comment section one thing i was able to realize there's a few things the anime changed number one he actually delayed the whole process of rescue he was just waiting for the final moment or something like that um which they never like you know told us in the previous episode i guess they're kind of trying telling it today to us you know because yeah this is part of his whole strategy so they would need to tell that to us so that's why they're telling this to us now okay um <clears throat> okay delaying the rescue what else just a sec it all went as planned karizawa feels genuine trust for me okay um she won't betray me easily she's an effective pawn <laughs> but now here's where the whole like you know but comes the thing that he says here kind of shows that he himself realizes his own problem as a human being and you know like in the end I suppose I'm still there. Uh, will my perception of others as nothing but pawns? Will this relationship of ours ever change? So there you go. Like I said, you might think that, oh, he's still the same. I am going to say here, no, he's still not the same. From season one, it's a drastic change we have seen here. Him actually thinking about, will I ever be able to change in itself? Will our relationship ever change in itself shows he's changing. A person who is in the process of changing thinks of stuff like that. If you're not changing, if you like, you never even think about stuff like this. You know? Like I said, a person who's completely crazy would never think that am I crazy? You know, and not like, you know, like <laughs> that's what I'm trying to say. That's what's happening here. If he really didn't change, he would not think of this, which shows that he's changing. And uh, I have high hopes in the future. A day will probably come where, as we see, like as Anokuji says, I'm not mature enough. A day will come when he'll probably become matured after interacting with people and getting the outside environment affecting him and molding him to a proper person with proper, like, you know, feelings for others. And he would actually stop looking at other people as pawn from that point onwards. So, there you go. Okay, so, and that's where it ends. And then after the credits, we see Karizawa's like says goodbye, Ayanakoji is like walking away, and here we get to see Aisu come in. And Aisu is like, Oh, I've never introduced myself. And okay, um, she says here, Okay, the ultimate masterpiece of the white room that your father created. Like, I'm not surprised she knows about this because you know, like, it's her dad like her dad knew his father Ayanakoji's father and they know each other and her dad also knows about the white room you know like all that stuff that's why I'm not surprised since Ayusu knows about this like obviously she would know about this it doesn't surprise me okay the ultimate masterpiece of the white room that your father created um the false genius um the role of burying it should fall to me and Ayanakoji's like huh 
Like, try me. You think you can, you can bury me? All right, good luck. That's where it ends. So yeah. Now, from the, like, you know, the, the, the visuals and everything, like, uh, of this season, like, you know, the, the, the poster and everything, uh, I think there was, like, one poster where Anukoji was there with Arisu, just standing, both of them were standing. I thought we were going to see more of Arisu, but look, seems like that will be for season three. This season was for Ruben. <laughs> so there you go. And, uh, yeah, so, and then it kind of wrote that, oh, for, like, see you in uh, season three or something like that. And that's where it ended so there you go good good ending good uh you know like a good episode i guess good way they ended it and uh, yeah so let me know if they skipped something in this final episode or something you know because yeah the studio is skipping stuff <laughs> let me know if there's something important they skipped here no spoilers however you know but anything in this you know only in this part you know if they skipped something uh, important let me know in the comments but either way that was it um yeah overall um yeah it was a good season i'm i'm kind of like you know like have mixed feelings about the whole uh skipping stuff but nothing you can do about it like what can i say um yeah but still even though they skipped a few things you know i genuinely enjoyed this season it was really good which i guess it kind of shows how good the story in itself is like even after skipping stuff if you're able to have such an enjoyable experience that shows what a good story this is so yeah i'm, I'm like you know I'm, I'm genuinely curious as to how we're going to see ayana koji develop from here and yeah so season three i'm guessing we're going to get it next year sometimes so yeah all right so there you go um uh, that was it uh thanks for watching guys this was my reaction to uh, classroom of the elite season two episode number 13 or was it 13 yeah episode number 13 so if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i'll check them out and that is it guys uh, thank you for watching and uh, yeah i'm um, obviously i'm going to uh, react to season 3 when it comes out as well really really excited to see what happens i'm guessing we're going to see more of arisu and kushida as well like probably anukuji is going to show her you know like not to mess with him <laughs> Or something like that like he says like he's going to expel her or something like we will see uh so something like that is going to happen i'm guessing so i'm kind of curious how horikita is going to because horikita doesn't want kushita to get expelled so maybe they'll have like a uh like you know like a you know like difference in opinion ayana koji and horikita and that'll be interesting to see but either way um yeah see you guys uh well when season three will come you know I'm, I'm excited to see that as well and react to it so hopefully it comes soon yeah uh so thanks for watching obviously this will be replaced by another show another seasonal anime um i'll be i have already made like a video talking about like the next season and all that i'll, I'll post that video later on somewhere uh within this week sometimes and uh you know like if you want to check that out you, you can see which shows which seasonal shows the next season i'm going to watch and uh yeah I, I feel like everyone can probably guess which i'm watching but there's a lot of big big shows coming out and obviously those i'm definitely going to watch so those will be replacing these shows anyways so yeah see you guys in the next video until then goodbye and have a nice day